Hey everybody, welcome back to Welcome to My World with Nat, Relocation Concierge. I am here for part two at Isla Academy. We promised you a tour of uh, the school because it really is endearing. It's, we were just talking, family friendly. It's really, it's a nurturing spot. And I'm back with Sean. There so we're going to take you on a tour and show you a little bit of what uh, school looks like. So we are at Ashkin floor right now. And right down there, Sean, you want to tell us what's down there? Uh, so this is our preschool, preschool also known as La Casita. These La are casita. twos and threes. Um, they have a thatched roof classroom. They have a student garden. They have a little playground out there. Some picnic tables below and a, a couple of bathrooms out there. Their class is underneath a mango tree um, <gasps> over here. Uh, but mangoes aren't in season right now. Not at the moment, but they're pretty close. <laughs> if you zoom in, there's some that are starting to show up, I think, on that on that tree, some green ones. Oh, um, exciting. And my um, my mentor, um, well, me, um, I remember the, the first school that I worked with in, in Tanzania, and, you know, there were uh, lots of infrastructural things that we were building and working on, and you mm -hmm. know, people had a, a leaky roof here or a, a wall that needed to be painted, and I remember he told us in a faculty meeting, a great teacher can teach under a mango tree, um, mm. and I used to put that up on my wall as a thing yeah. to say, it really, um, you can be creative in your space and do great yeah. things, no absolutely, what, and, and, and be, yeah. We're, absolutely we're, we're living in the tropics things are gonna you you have to think differently absolutely yeah. okay so where should we go first uh well you know if you want to just do like a tour, I'll, I'll walk yep. you around here we can see a lot of it if you want to follow me yeah up here we're on a balcony yeah we built all the rails ourselves we built the roofs ourselves we built all the tables ourselves this balcony overlooks both our preschool over there, our swimming pool, and our student lounge. Love. That yeah. lounge is brand new. I can't wait to go check That's it out. Right. All of our students, all of our classrooms upstairs and downstairs have um, balconies that connect to them. Yes. And so we use these as classroom space. Yeah. Um, if you look down over here, you'll see our playground in the distance. We'll get an up-close shot mm -hmm. later. Um, our basketball court and parking area out there mm -hmm. and uh, and then this cuts into a classroom uh, just this way our at the current um, year our students have upstairs between first first through fourth grade have classrooms upstairs yeah and you get a sense we call this area up here the jungle yes so you'll see a lot of the jungle friends a lot of themes of that going up here it took some years for us to fully name all of our spaces. Okay. You know, they needed to come up with their own name. So upstairs is the jungle, and I'll name all the places as we go along. Um, you get a sense. Here is a, some teacher resources here. Mm -hmm. We have an area to get water, a little balcony, a, a mural. The watering on. hole. Yeah. Uh, there is a small classroom there that connects via the same balcony. That's right. And then back here is another classroom in the jungle. Um, it's evidenced by the tigers or whatever. <laughs> yes. And out here we have a bit of our bamboo forest. Love so it. You can get a good lay of the land from I, I really like, I, I want to come to school. I Down wanna... here we have an external kitchen. So we oh. do we do have an inside kitchen, but we do a lot of our cooking out there just because it gets hot, it gets smelly, hot, yeah. loud and whatnot. Yeah. We have a storage area over there. And then these two classrooms that you see here, yeah. they're called the Rancho. El the ran rancho. Yes, the Rancho. Uh, this is more of our pre-K and kindergarten group. Yeah. Um, the classroom to the right um, is a brand new space. And yes. you'll notice they're doing a dance class down yes. there at the moment. What an awesome space. Really great. And that took not very much time to put up. Oh, two weeks. Max. They did a good job. Yeah. yeah. We've worked with the same, at all times we worked with... Um, the same builder for all of our classrooms. Okay. Wonderful. Like, um, 
even what city in the country would be the right spot for it. Okay. And, and so I didn't have a lot of money. That's number one. So okay. the, to have an idea that you build from scratch was not an option. It wasn't okay. like, I did have realtors show me the, you know, um, properties with nothing on it, but it just was not a reality to be able to build a campus. Mm -hmm. um, and so I needed to find an existing structure. And I was taken, uh, I mean, the first place, the very first place that I fell in love with, which was not in this town, but in another town in the center of the country, was an old car wash. And if you know about the car washes of the DR, they are, they don't have them so much up here, but they are a combination car wash, salon, nightclub, cafeteria. It's a whole it's a thing. thing. It's a whole thing. So this place was like, in many ways, it, it was set up, like the car wash area would have been the basketball playground area, and like the salon would have been the classroom. There were even cabanas in the back. Okay. Or not, which I was thinking, maybe that's teacher housing room. I don't know, but... Um, but, you know, over time, uh, I noticed that there were either commercial properties that had spaces that looked the size of a classroom and no green space whatsoever. Zero, right? Like, I mean, none. Uh, just concrete outside, maybe if that. Or you could find homes uh, or small buildings that did have a lot of green space. And I knew that I wanted a lot of green space in the DR. I knew I didn't want to have students inside all the time. Yeah. Um, so, but many of those places, many of the homes, even really nice, expensive homes here, have bedrooms that are not huge, especially some of the bedrooms. True. Right? I mean, if you have one bedroom that's just large enough for your you know, eight-year-old child, it's not appropriate for a classroom. So no, not you need, ideal. You need a place where, where it's really built big. And um, uh, when I found this place, uh, th I, this was like, one of 20 that I looked at in in the area, in the North Coast. Mm -hmm. um, and I really liked one that was right down the street. So there was this, there's this house, it's like three doors down from here. Really big front yard area, if you see when you pass through. Uh, the inside classrooms are not huge, but it, it felt like it could work for a kindergarten, daycare a start. Type place. Yeah, a start. I thought that's what I will start and we'll run this kindergarten and we'll go. And I had set some specifics to the real estate uh, agents, like this isn't my budget. Um, I liked it so much that when the agent left, I started walking around the neighborhood. Uh, and as we, I mean, you know, 100 meters later, saw this and I said, this is the one. Called the number that was listed uh, on the sign there. It was the same real estate agent. This had been like four or $500 outside of the budget. And calculating it at the time I thought, I mean, that's like three, two, three kids, right? Yeah, right. okay. You mean four or five thousand more? No, no, no. I'm talking about per month rent. Oh, we, per we month. Renting. Yes, okay, okay. Another, th they, another thing to remember, we just started renting. So yeah. And had the ability to pay up front. So, uh, you know, taking a budget and, and adding 600 bucks to it, knew that I, I had to have this, this space needed more kids than I had already anticipated was the minimum number to cover costs. And I just knew that this was the spot that could do that. Now, what that also did, that was put a pressure on us to have more kids than probably would seem possible in the first yeah. year, right? Um, also didn't get the keys to this place until almost June, which is a weird time to promote a school because it's the end of the school year. year yeah. Everyone's already gone. Many people have already signed up for their school in the next year. And, you know, all of those issues. Um, and then, uh, so, um, so having signed that up, I said, this can't just be a kindergarten because it won't pay the bills. There's not going to be enough kids to yeah. fill us up here. What else can we do? And I had heard that there were kids in this community doing homeschool. And I knew that, and this is seven years ago, and I knew that these kids were not doing homeschool necessarily because they wanted to. Or yeah. they were doing it that they didn't like the options of schooling. It wasn't like a religious thing, like it might be in some places or it wasn't it was aligned like, with what the parents Yeah, it was wanted. just like yeah. parents going, I don't have any other options with this. So I promoted to all these families in the very first Yeah, I year. remember you said that, yeah. And I said, uh, just come up here. Well okay, so you add that and then you're you're going back to your question, like how'd you make it family? Well, 
I was feeling somewhat, I don't want to act like it was totally uh, inspired, but I was feeling somewhat insecure about the fact that we were in a house, right? I loved this house, yeah. but I knew like people's idea of a school was not a house. So the only thing that I felt that I could do was embrace what it was, which mm. is that, okay, if we're going to be in a home, then we're going to use words like family, right? And then we're going to talk about what it feels like to be at home, which is that kids, I don't know, they have jobs here, and that different age levels mix around each other, mm -hmm. and that the doors are open, and that, uh, you know, um, that kids are working in the kitchen with our staff, and all that kind of feel, right? Um, that sense of community. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really, like, family. And it, 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 it started dawning on me because a lot of people would say things like, well, in a traditional school, this, or my daughter's accustomed to going to a traditional school, and, and that's when I started realizing, actually, your kid doesn't go to a traditional school. Your kid goes to an industrial era school, right? yes. which has only existed for between 60 and 100 years, depending on your Well, it's what we know, or what people consider as traditional, right? right? Yeah. True traditional. Language is, lexicon is true. so important. Absolutely. True traditional education yeah. would be in a home, Yeah. right? with a variety of ages in a small community, maybe even one teacher doing all the kids in the village, right? Yeah. And so going back to that uh, was something that felt both like cool and great, but also in the back of my head, somewhat necessary. Once you do a tour around this campus, what you'll see is that it is this like beautiful home, white cement building is what it was, but it was never lived in. So I had a lot of unfinished pieces. It was like a blank canvas. Uh, and when I dreamed of building a school, I didn't dream of building something with like these, you know, Spanish tile roof or anything like that. It's not the thought. So uh, I was looking for some way to put more of our personality onto it. And coupled with the fact that you have very little money, you can do like a mix of things. And it turns out that like building a preschool out of uh, thatched roof and taking all your railings and instead of buying metal posts buying like well the, that sense of creativity yeah. comes up automatically because you have to be resourceful with what you have yes absolutely yeah. I love, and I, I think that's something that you instill in the programming too because there's a lot of thought process that has to go on there's a lot of challenges that yeah. you know so it's all sort of it compounds and it's going down to the kids. Yeah, and, you know, the, what is it, like, necessity is the mother of invention, I think is the expression. Mm. Like, we, we, we didn't have, like, a full library, okay? We didn't have this uh, set of textbooks of all subjects for all grade levels, and we had to accept all students. So, um, I... I would say, textbooks are over. We don't have textbooks, textbooks are over. Or I would say, based on the fact that our, our tables and chairs we built in-house, and I would say, we don't purchase these imported plastic metal things, you know, we don't put your kids in that. Or your kids in a woven, you know, rustic built, built I grew up hand. with those. My, yeah. my, as a French Canadian, we had many of those back yeah. home with rope, yeah. There. So all those like needs, uh, even um, even the uniform. I mean, frankly, I never wanted to have a uniform, anyways. But we weren't going to have a uniform in the first days because we didn't know what we didn't have time to, to buy yeah. shirts. And rather than doubling back and being like, "Oh, hey, now finally we have it," we just said, "No." I mean, what's the point? We don't need it. There was just this magic thing that happened in the first year where. That first group of kids, which I think are so pivotal to uh, everything, that, the culture that was built here, they were all okay with being different. And they, they, um, they didn't need validation from a group of peers or a bunch of older kids. or It didn't need to look like something mm -hmm. else for them to be happy. Uh, you had a 14-year-old and you had a 10-year-old, and there were ways for them to collaborate that felt very much like a, you know, a holiday dinner that you have with the cousins. Yeah. Um, and there was this acceptance of like we're all doing our own thing at our own time and it's all cool and then we're going to work together on these things like presentation day 
and there's this motivation for the 10-year-old to help the 14-year-old finish up because really everyone's showing off at that time. Um, it sounds like you really embrace flow, like yeah. fluidity. You go with it. Yes. Um, and that's a really important quality because, um, and it's one it's hard to learn because there's a rigidity in life or what we're taught that it's, things are supposed to be a certain way. Yeah. So I, I applaud the... Here's a key fact. The flow. Here's a key fact. I've always been building the school. I've never... I did do some... I did do some counseling and stuff in, in existing schools back in the States, and I did work for some schools in Asia, okay, that were, that were so existing. But starting from my real experience of admin uh, 11 years ago, I've always been... There is no school. Like we're starting with fixing, making the tables, and, and and so while I'm super experienced in that part of it, I didn't have that that uh, idea of what it was supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. and the first one's in Tanzania, and um, when we got there, uh, the grass wasn't. I mean, if you could imagine a space about this big. The grass was not installed, the tables had not been finished yet, the wires and windows were not in yet, and you have two weeks to get started with school. And all of the students will be joining this place for the first time. So, you know, now figure out what direction people walk in the halls, where people go, how, how the bathrooms work, and that kind of thing. And, yeah. And so, and then in the school in Salcedo, we say it's Antifico, it's built in an, an abandoned uh, warehouse, right? So. Everybody who walks into these spaces already immediately accepts that this is just not like the norm. And if you attempt to, I don't know, pretend that you're the norm, like don't look over there, I know it looks different, but <laughs> uh, it's still the same, then it seems false, right? Yeah. And it's not really being yourself yeah. anyways. And if you're gonna have kids of uh, all these nationalities, ages and whatnot, working in a space, you do need the space to function for you. It turns out that space can be pretty critical to uh, handling, uh, not just handling, but inspiring student learning. The right setup in a room, which is something you learn as an elementary school teacher, can be huge for the amount of learning and, and things that can take place. And, and it would just also happen that around that time, you started getting, this may seem like an obsolete at this point idea, but even uh, many of the larger companies like Google or whatever were doing alternative style office space. The uh, share space. Yeah, and so there was a little bit of a, an acceptance of like, yeah, right, maybe it should look different. Maybe, why are these top businesses um, making places where there's relaxed seating if they really want people to work, right? And that was like an, an oxymoron in the past. Uh, and so there was enough of a community here, especially in this North Coast, who are already kind of open-minded and alternative, at least, at least employed alternatively, yeah. um, who were like, yeah, uh, I, don't, I didn't want to be in that, that type of setup anyways. Yeah. yeah. So you have a great setup, and I want everybody to see it. Okay. So let's take them on a bit of a tour.